All right. So glad um, that you all made it here today for our last Candler yoga session together. I've been doing a lot of reflection over this past week and I'm going to kind of try to continue to do that this week as I, like many of us are kind of ending wherever we're at right now, ending kind of one period of time and kind of moving on to the next. And this morning I, w I woke up and I thought about this uh, saying that an Indian philosopher that I really like, Krishna Muriti says, and he says that I enter fully into each experience and I exit fully out of each experience as well. And that I put the whole of me in all I do and I take the whole of me out of all I do. And I really like that saying. And I think it's important for us to think about, you know, we always hear, give it your all, give it your all, give it everything you got. And, um, you know, sometimes we can do that better than other times, but we also have to learn how to exit um, certain moments and spaces. Even every breath is new. So entering one breath, exiting, entering the next breath, exiting again. And so I thought we could spend a little bit of time thinking about um, maybe turning pages. So we'll spend some kind of inward poses, closing ourselves off to particular things that we're ready for. And then we'll do some opening poses as well as we prepare for whatever comes next for any of us. Um, before I start though, is there anything, since this is our last class that everyone really wants to make sure to do today, a pose that's your favorite. If there's not, I'm not offended. I just want to throw it out there. All right, it's a wild card then. Y'all are kind of stuck with whatever I give you. <laughs> All right, well, if y'all wouldn't mind, go ahead and um, you can mute. Well, I can, I can do it from here, actually, I think. Mute your screen. And then, um, of course, if there's something that comes up during our time together, you can, you can say that. Oh, hey, Ashley. Hey, Alice, I see that y'all joined. I can't see everyone all at the same time, so I have to like flip through the pages. Glad y'all are here. Welcome. Oh, and last little piece of information, then I promise we'll begin. Um, I understand, I know some people, this is like a work day, and I know it's weird, but we're all at homes, and it's a work day, so if you have to pop off after the call, definitely fine. If you want to join me for just um, some coffee and a couple of words of goodbye or something, um, you're welcome to do that as well. So let's go ahead and find ourselves in that seated position to begin. Sitting up nice and tall. Finding a place that's comfortable for you. So a seat that's comfortable for you, but not so comfortable that you're fall asleep. So something where you can still be alert. For me, sitting up nice and tall helps me to do that, but some people even start nodding off with their eyes closed. So if you need to just open your eyes and bring them out in front of you, know that that's an option. In order to kind of travel inward, some of the, one of the skills that I use is first, I just think about my surroundings, what's actually around me. I'm in a living room, so I'm feeling this sh shag carpet underneath me, kind of this cool air around me. There's birds outside. And once I kind of put all those things in their place around me, then I can release them and come inward. Noticing the places of the body that are feeling different today. Maybe taking note of the places that are stiff or tight, or maybe the places that feel open and ready to move.
And before we begin the movement part of our practice, the asana part of our practice, take a moment to think about if there's a place or a particular thing, a space, a thought that you're ready to exit. Maybe noticing how as you focus your energy more in one spot, you're able to find more strength for whatever is next. Exiting moments or spaces doesn't mean that we still don't think about them or appreciate them. It just means that we're ready for the next breath. Wherever you are in your meditation, I invite you to begin to bring some movement, but staying with that intention, that mind space that we're in, dropping the chin towards the chest, just to lengthen through the back of the neck. Especially in the morning, this place usually has a bit of tension for most people. And then slowly guiding the left ear towards the left shoulder. You can feel that stretch along the right side of the neck, even into the right shoulder as well. We'll drop back down through center and then inhale over to the opposite side. And then just go back and forth a few times here. After you feel like you've done enough rotations, you can come back to center. Maybe gently opening your eyes if that feels right. And inhale, reaching the arms up overhead. Oh, one of my favorite stretches. Imagine you're trying to touch the ceiling, lengthening through each vertebrae. And then exhale, right hand behind the back, left hand to the right knee, just look over that right shoulder. Inhale, let's come back through center. Arms look back up overhead. Deep breath, sucking all the air in. And then exhale over towards the opposite side. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale, switch the cross of the legs. And we'll hinge from the hips and come forward and down. Just our first forward facing fold today. Drop the forehead to the floor. 
try to relax the back. But you can use a little bit of energy here. Maybe crawl the fingertips forward, trying to lengthen and deepen the stretch. And then very slowly, let's bring our hands back up towards the body. And let's roll over onto our knees. We're gonna bring the knees directly underneath the hips. We're gonna start with extending that right leg out long to the side. Good. Big inhale, we'll reach and lengthen, lift up. Yeah, you might have to adjust yourself depending on what kind of space you're in. And then exhale, left hand towards the left side. You can either bring it to a block or to the floor and reach that right arm up and over. Now, as you do this, try to think about looking up towards the ceiling. Bring that right bicep towards the right ear, like you're trying to reach to the front of the mat. Good. Inhale. Use your core to lift you up. Exhale. Right hand to that right leg, that long leg, and reach over with the left arm. Again, bicep beside the left ear, opening chest up, looking up towards the ceiling. Deep side stretch. Okay, we're going to do that one more time on this side. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, left hand to the mat. Right bicep to right ear. And if you want to try, lift up that right leg. Just a little bit of a teaser for some planks we'll do later. Right foot to the floor. Inhale, lift back up. Right hand, right leg, exhale, leap over towards the left. Inhale back through center, and we'll just switch sides. Left leg extends out long. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, right hand down, left arm up and over. Again, spiral that chest open. Even press those hips forward slightly. You might even feel the stretch in the front side of that left thigh. Inhale, use the core. Maybe come up one fingertip at a time. Exhale over to the opposite side. Good. Inhale back through center one more time. Exhale down. Option to try to lift up that left leg. Doesn't have to be very high, just a couple of inches is fine. Slowly release, use your core, come back up, and over towards the opposite side. Inhale, come back through center. Exhale, just drop onto the hands and knees now for a tabletop pose, and we'll flow through a few rounds of cat-cow. Spread the fingertips wide, wrists underneath the shoulders. Inhale, drop the belly down, look up. Exhale, arch the spine, like that Halloween cat. That's why I think it's called cat pose. Drop the forehead down, look between the legs. Inhale, look up. Exhale, round. Go back and forth between these two postures, adding on any movements. You're welcome to be creative here. I often bend my elbows because I think that feels good. And sometimes I add a twist. Maybe you want to look over to one side and then the other. You can sink back for a child's pose if that's what you feel like you need this morning. Just a couple more rounds here. Great. Coming back to that tabletop pose, we're going to transition into what's called puppy pose. So hips stay right over the knees. That's the most challenging part, I think, of this posture, but do your best. And all we're doing is walking the hands forward, so palms facing down, and bringing that chest towards the floor. So we're going to stretch to the front side of the body, a little bit of a back bend here to begin. You might feel a stretch through the arms and even through the armpits. 
Take your time, breathe here. You can maybe bring your chin to the floor or you can just bring your forehead to the floor. As you're ready, slowly hands come back in, wrists underneath the shoulders, curling the toes, straightening the legs and lifting the hips for our first downward facing dog. Let's we'll take a couple moments in down dog, pedal the feet out, one heel down and then the other. You can lift up one leg and then the other. Sometimes I do that in my first down dog. Let's look between the hands, slowly tiptoe the feet up to the top of the mat. Releasing in a forward facing fold, just letting the upper body fold over the legs, leaning that weight slightly forward so not sinking into the heels, shaking up the head, maybe swaying right and left. Inhale, let's lift up halfway for a flat back. Fingertips can come up to the shins if that feels right. Exhale, release. Inhale, big reverse swan dive. Sweep the arms all the way up, lengthening, reaching for the ceiling. And exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, let's reach and lengthen. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale down. Plant knees, oh, plant hands as you bend the knees. Step back to plank. Lower down through chaturanga. If you need to drop your knees for this first one, totally fine, or for all of them today. Try to hover above the mat before inhale, lifting up to your back bend. Exhale, downward facing dog. We're gonna do that a few times. Look between the hands, walk, step, or jump, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, reverse swan dive. If you wanna add a back bend this time, you can, by pressing the hips forward, looking up and back. And hands to heart center. Inhale, lift. Exhale, hinge from the hips, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, planting hands, floating through your vinyasa, chaturanga, your version of a back bend, downward facing dog. Look between the hands, walk, step, or jump, forward fold. Inhale, halfway up. Exhale, release. Inhale all the way up, little back bend. This time, straight away, swan dive all the way down. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, flow through. Meeting and downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg lifts, three legged dog. We're gonna hold three like a dog here for a moment, focusing on our form. It's always good to remind ourselves of our form. Sometimes we just forget if we're not being mindful. Make sure the fingers are spread nice and wide. Make sure the back is trying to work on getting flat and that right heel is lifting straight up towards the ceiling. Right toes are pointed down. So our hips are square to the mat. Now we're gonna open up our hips by bending the right knee and stacking the right hip on top of the left. Great. And if you want, from there, you can draw some hip circles. So right knee can meet the left, and you can swing it up and around. As always, just because this is our last class doesn't mean you have to do everything that I say, okay? Please continue to listen to yourself. If something doesn't feel right, just don't do it. Back to three-legged dog, inhale. Look between the hands, exhale, bring that right knee in towards the chest. Try to hold and squeeze before stepping the right foot between the hands. 
Great, once you have that right foot there, bring that left foot down at a 45 degree angle and inhale, sweep the arms up for warrior one. Make sure the hips are square to the front of the mat. We'll interlace the hands behind the back. Inhale, pull the palms together, together as you open up that chest. Exhale, humble warrior. Dive that chest in between the legs. Hands come up overhead. You're getting a stretch through the shoulders. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Maybe you can even look up if, it, if your balance allows you to. Exhale, fold. Last time here, inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, fold. Release the hands, step that left foot back slightly, drop the left knee down, inhale, sweep up, low lunge. Lean that weight forward, maybe reach that chest up and back. Hands can be together or apart, it's really your choice. One more inhale. Exhale, hands to heart center, and bring that left elbow to the outside of the right knee. We'll draw those hands close with the heart, and you can just look over the right shoulder. Just a little bit of a twist, ringing up the spine. Whenever I do twists, I think about like a towel that you twist, and you're getting all that dirty water out. Think about getting all that stuff that I don't want to keep any more out of my body. Just a little image that I think about. Inhale back through center. Exhale, hands to the floor, and we'll straighten that right leg, right toes point up. Books underneath your hands are fine if the floor feels far, far away, or fingertips can just touch to either side of that right leg. Then really breathe into the right hamstring. We'll bend back into the right knee, frame the foot with both hands, and step it back to plank. Good, hold the plank here for a breath. We're gonna do a couple of, um, a version of a push-up that helps us strengthen our backs. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower very slowly all the way down to the mat, trying to hug those elbows in nice and tight, so like your chaturanga, come all the way down. And then let the belly come on the floor, reach those arms forward, lifting them off the mat, reach the legs up off the mat. Exhale, draw the hands back, so elbows towards the rib cage. Good, inhale, reach back forward, you're still lifted. Exhale, draw back. Inhale, reach back forward. Last time, exhale, draw back. Plant the hands, curl the toes back on the mat, big press up plank pose, and then downward facing dog. Good, get two breaths here, settle in before we do that same flow on the opposite side. We'll begin by lifting that left leg up, three-legged dog, and holding here. So focusing on that form, strong foundation in both the hands and the right foot. Left toes point down, but you're using a lot of energy to try to lift the left heel up towards the sky. As you lift the left heel up higher, you should feel a deeper stretch in that standing leg. Good, we'll bend the left knee and we'll stack the hips. Staying here or drawing those hip circles. I like to bring my left knee to the right, right? And then draw, draw a big circle swinging up and around. Back to three-legged dog, inhale. Look between the hands, exhale. Use that core strength, try to bring the knee in towards the chest, hover there for a moment, and then lightly step the foot between the hands. We'll spiral that right foot down at a 45 degree angle. As you're ready, inhale, rise. Arms come up overhead. Great, hips square to the front of the mat. We'll bring your hands behind the back, palms touch, Getting the wrist to touch if you can. Inhale, crack open the heart. Exhale, humble warrior, forward fold. 
Left shoulder's coming on the inside of that left knee. Inhale, we'll lift up. Exhale, humble warrior. Inhale and rise. Exhale, last time fall. Release the hands. Right foot steps back slightly. Right knee comes down. Inhale, arms lift up, low lunge. Adjust this posture as you need, making sure that right that left knee isn't coming in front of that left ankle. So if you have to scoot around the toes a little bit, you can. Release the shoulders down the back. One more inhale. Exhale, hands to heart center. Let's twist. Right elbow to the outside of that bent knee, the left knee. Maybe you can bring your gaze over the left shoulder. Think about not collapsing over that front leg, but lifting and lengthening. So crown of the head is kind of reaching towards the ceiling at a diagonal angle. Inhaling back through center. Exhale, hands come down, half splits, left toes lift up. Breathing into the back side of that extended leg. We'll bend back into that left knee, framing the foot with both hands, and again, back to our plank pose. So we're gonna do a little bit of a rotation between our right side plank and our left side plank. If you need to, you can come to your knees, okay? So that's our modification here. If you're staying on your feet, think about bringing your belly button up towards your spine. So you have a flat line in the front of the head towards the back of the feet. Instead of looking down towards your feet, think about just looking down in front of you, slightly in front of the hands, okay? We're gonna first roll over to the right side, coming onto the right palm of the hand and lifting that left arm up. Now, if this is a challenge, drop that right knee down. Well, the truth is it's a challenge for all of us. But if you need that extra support, drop that right knee down. If you want to explore and try something else, try lifting up the left leg. So kind of like we did that warm-up gate pose, lifting up that top leg. It's okay if you're shaking. That's a sign that, hmm, I think I'm going to build some strength in this pose. Good. Drop the left leg down. Left hand down, and we're rotating to the opposite side. So you're coming onto the knife edge of the left foot and lifting the right arm up. The left knee can come down as a support here. If it is down, keep thinking about pressing the hips up. Option to try to lift up the right leg. Good, right leg down, right hand down, chaturanga. Inhaling to your back bend, exhaling downward facing dog. Two breaths here. Maybe you sense that your down dog is a little bit deeper now than that first one we did. We'll look between the hands, walk, step, or jump, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, reverse swan dive, sweep the arms all the way up overhead, and exhale, hands to heart center. Inhale, let's lift and lengthen. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward facing fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release, bend knees, plant hands, back to plank, flow through. Chaturanga, upward facing dog, downward facing dog. Inhale, right leg lifts, three-legged dog. Exhale, let's bend the right knee and stack the hips. 
So now you're going to stay here. If you want to think about doing those expansion poses with me today, what we're going to do is flip our dog all the way around. So how we'll do that is we're going to bring attention to that right foot, that right foot that's lifted in the air. We're going to turn all the way down, kind of like a back bend, bringing that right foot to the mat. I'm rotating my left foot. Now I'm grounding both heels down, pressing the hips up, and then reaching that right arm up and back. So it's kind of like a reverse tabletop, but with one hand lifted off the mat. Good. Keep reaching the hips up. Keep expanding the chest. Good. Rotating out of this pose, right hand comes down. Right leg lifts back up, three-legged dog. Look between the hands, try to plant that right foot. This time we're preparing for high lunge, so trying to keep that back leg straight. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Good, relax the shoulders. Just a gentle gaze forward here. One more inhale. Exhale, hands come down towards the right foot. And we're gonna come into a few different options. The first thing we're gonna do is a standing split. So we're gonna bring all of our weight to our right leg and lift the left toes up towards the sky. If you're like me, I have to step back a little bit because there's a couch right in front of me. It's kind of like a forward fold on one leg. So we're thinking about just releasing the upper body over the standing leg and lifting his left toes to the ceiling. You can stay here, or with me, we're gonna come into a revolved half moon. We'll bring that left leg back to parallel to the floor. Left hand stays down, the left corner of the mat. Inhale, reach the right arm up. We're twisting towards that supporting leg. A really big stretch on the IT band, so just be gentle there. Right hand down, left foot down, heels in, toes slightly out, Malasana pose. So this is just a little squat here, elbows on the inside of the knees. If you need some extra support, you can grab those books or, a, or if you have a block like I do and just put them underneath the hips. And that can be a little bit of extra support here. But we're, as we're in this position, we want to think about lengthening through the spine. So we have a tendency to just do this in this pose, and I know it's really hard to get out of that, but eventually thinking about sitting up nice and tall, okay? One more breath here. Hands come down, lift the hips, heel toe the feet back together. Great job, inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, reverse swan dive. Take a little back bend. And hands to heart center. I don't know about you all, but that one broke a sweat for me. <laughs> I feel like I, I, I built a little bit of heat on that flow. But we're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. So as you're ready, inhale, let's sweep the arms up. And exhale, swan dive down, heart towards the floor. Great. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, release. Come back down, plank, chaturanga. Leaning all the way in downward facing dog. We're gonna do our flip dog on the left side, so start by first lifting up that left leg. Inhale. Exhale, bend the left knee, stack the hips. This is a great place to stop. There's a lot of good opening happening right here. If you feel like you wanna go on a little bit more of an adventure today, then you can bring that left leg all the way behind you, spiraling the right foot. Both heels ground down, that's important. Knees in line with the hips so we don't put extra strain on the knees. Lift the hips up high, reach that left arm behind you. Look back. So you're not looking forward. Drop the head. One more breath here. Really press through the heels, lift up. And 
and then left hand meets the floor, left leg lifts back up. Exhale, step that left foot between the hands. Preparing for high lunge, so adjusting your stance as you need. Inhale, sweep the arms up. In high lunge, that back heel is actually lifted off the floor. So it's different than our warrior poses. Take a couple breaths here. And as you're ready, we'll come into our standing splits. Fingertips to the floor, all your weight into that front leg. Lift the right toes up. This is why I always try to eat my breakfast after yoga because it's hard to be kind of upside down. I don't know. Maybe I'm too sensitive, but I just can't do it. It's too hard on my stomach. All right, we're gonna bring that right leg back to parallel to the floor, right toes point down. Right hand stays at the right corner of the mat. And as we come into our twisted half moon, you're trying to keep your hips square to the floor as you lift that left arm up. So this one is a really challenging posture. It takes, of course, um, a lot of flexibility, but it also incorporates strength and balance. So you've got kind of this little trifecta of skills going on. We have one more inhale. Exhale, left hand down, right foot down, and drop back into your Malasana pose, back into your yogi squat. Again, try to lift the crown of the head up, dropping the hips down. If your heels don't all the way touch the floor, first try adjusting your stance. You might just have to bring your legs a little bit wider. And if that doesn't work, then you can just, it's okay. <laughs> You can bring something underneath the heels, like a little book, and you just work on getting that flexibility. Because so what that stretching, if you can't get the heels down, is the back, you know, the back side of that ankle and into the calf. For other people, it's their hips that kind of prevent them. For me, that's what's prevented me a long time. And so just take your time breathing. And slowly just come to find a seat. We're not quite done with our work yet. But we are going to find a seat and prepare for uh, a boat pose, okay? So hands behind the thighs, lift the heels up, and try to get those shins parallel to the floor. If that doesn't feel good today, drop the heels down, and arms can be up to the side. And you can just hold this position, working on keeping that chest open and engaging that center line through the core. Otherwise, our heels are lifted. Shins are parallel to the floor. We're going to lower down to a low bow. So heels hover, shoulder blades hover, hands hover, palms facing up. Then we'll pull it all back in. Zip the legs in towards the chest. Slowly lower. Open up the heart. Open up the front side of the body. And then close it off. Bring it back in. Three more times. Inhale, open. Use the breath. You can easily make a shh sound as you come up. Shh. It helps me. <laughs> Inhale. Two more. Maybe use that breath. Shh. Inhale. Last time. Shh. And then come all the way down on your mat. Let's draw the knees in towards the chest. You can roll right and left, kind of side to side a few times. But then we're gonna to try to roll forward and back, building up a little bit of momentum here. Long ways on the spine. And eventually getting enough speed so that we can roll over, our ankles will cross, hands come down, and we shoot our legs back to plank. If it worked, it worked. If it didn't, don't sweat it. <laughs> Just come back to plank. Lift your hips up, downward facing dog. One more thing here. Inhale, reach that right leg up, three-legged dog. 
Exhale, step that right foot between the hands. Inhale, lift the arms up back to high lunge. Exhale, open up that chest. So you're spreading the elbows apart wide here. Inhale, lift the arms. We're going to do this a few times. Exhale, open up the heart. If you want something more, inhale, lift the arms. On your exhale, you can drop that left knee. Inhale, we'll rise. Lift up the left knee. Exhale, open. Inhale, lift. Exhale, open. Inhale, lift. Last time, exhale, open. Inhale, lift. Exhale, warrior two. Right palm flips up, inhale, reverse. Warrior two, and extended side angle. Right forearm to the thigh, or hand towards the floor. And again, bicep towards that left ear. Let's do one more flow here. Warrior two. Reach up and over, reverse. Warrior two. And extended side angle. We'll meet in warrior two. Cartwheeling the hands down. Downward facing dog. Opposite side, inhale, left leg lifts. Exhale, left foot between the hands. Inhale, rise up, high lunge. Exhale, spread the elbows apart, open up the chest, look up and back. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, back bend. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale. If you want to add the knee, you can, dropping the right knee down lightly and inhale, lifting back up. A few more times. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. One more time. Come back to a high lunge. Rotate that right foot down. Open up warrior two. Oops, can I turn around so I can actually see you all? Left palm flips up. Inhale, reverse. Warrior two. And your version of extended side angle. One more, warrior two, reverse, warrior two, extended side angle. Come back, warrior two. Let's straighten that left leg. Bring both feet parallel to the short edges of the mat. We're gonna prepare for a wide-legged forward fold with a few variations today. Inhale, open up that chest, exhale, Fold, pause halfway. Okay, try to keep that spine nice and long. Hands out to the side. All we're gonna do is we're gonna rotate so that right palm comes all the way towards that left ankle. Maybe you can look up towards that left hand that should be shooting up towards the ceiling now. Here, let's come back through center, rotate through the spine, building that nice back strength, really important. Our core is both in the front and the back. Slowly twist opposite side, left hand towards that right ankle. Maybe look up towards the right hand in the ceiling. Good, one more time each side, back through center. Twist right hand, left ankle. If you can't reach the ankle, that's totally fine. Just reach towards that right side. There's always a variation that you can find. Come back through center, and then opposite side. Come back through center, lengthen the spine once more, inhale, and exhale, drop all the way down, fingertips underneath you. Relax in this wide-legged forward fold. We're going to drop over, coming into crouching tiger, right side, left toes lift up, hands on the inside of the right leg, or hands at Anjali Mudra at heart center. And then shift over towards the opposite side. Great. As we do this, think about keeping your chest up high and your hips down low. Great. 
If you have to keep your hands down, that's fine. One more on each side. And then we'll come back through center. Point those left toes back to the top of the mat. Take a big step forward, forward facing fold. Inhale, reverse swan dive, sweeping all the way up. Take a little swan or a little back bend here. And then hands to heart center. Let's do one balance pose together, standing balance pose, and then we'll come down onto the mat. I want to do a camel pose to open up our hearts and then we'll make it into a reclined position for some final twists and stretches. So you're nearly, nearly there. <laughs> okay, heels directly underneath the hips. Since um, y'all didn't name your favorite pose, we're gonna do my favorite pose, <laughs> which is dancer pose. I really love this pose. So bring the uh, heels directly underneath the hips, lift all the toes off the mat, and just ground them down individually. Think about tucking that tailbone in a little bit, and that'll help you to have this better posture, and it'll also help you to engage your core. So that core is tight, you're not just, you know, hanging out here like nothing's happening. Okay, shoulders up towards the ears, inhale, exhale, let them fall down the back, palms open, nice and tall. It's called samastiki pose or mountain pose. So you're tall like a mountain in this position. It's a very kind of proud looking pose. All right, we'll bring our weight over into the left leg, and we're just gonna bend the right knee, okay? And if you're feeling like balance is just challenging for you today, just hang out here. You can just touch that foot down a few times. Practice on standing on one foot. That can be hard in and of itself. If you wanna explore, we'll take that right hand over towards the right side, and we're gonna try to grab onto the inside of the right foot or the right ankle. Either is fine for today. Once you do that, then draw the knees back together. And zip the knees back together. Inhale, let's lift that left arm up. Palm is facing towards you to begin, and then you can face the palm out. Like you're gonna high five someone. Inhale, lengthen. And then exhale, begin to reach that chest forward as you press that right heel up towards the sky. Important thing here is we're thinking about reaching and stretching, like reaching that front and back leg with the same amount of energy. Try to keep that left bicep beside the face. It can be really challenging. The more you kick, the more intense the stretch will be, but also the easier it will be to balance. If you fall out of it, you know, that happens. Oops. Just come back in. One more inhale. And to really build strength, we try to exhale, come out of this pose the same way we came in. Great. Right foot meets the left. And then I always like to check out my footprint in the mat because it just shows you, ooh, it's really grounded right in that moment. All right. Opposite side, you might find your sides are different. Mine always are. Heels down, tuck that belly in, shoulders up and back, and we'll prepare. Bring that weight into the right leg, left knee bends, hanging out here, working on that standing balance, or bringing that grab to the inside of the left foot with the left hand. Zip the knees back together. That's gonna help us have proper alignment as we reach and lengthen. Inhale, right arm up, palm facing forward if you want that variation, and then slowly both lean and kick. You can have a slight bend in your standing knee. I'll just show you guys from the side this time. Slight bend in the standing knee is fine so you don't lock out the joint, but you're working on keeping that leg fairly straight. And you can take your time. You don't have to rush into it all at once. Maybe you can keep that gaze a little bit more forward versus down. Falling out and coming back in is perfectly fine. If you want to do a mudra with your hand, maybe bring your 
point your and your thumb together. That's an option. And then very slowly come all the way back the same way you came in. Releasing that left leg, shaking the right one out. And in your own time, coming all the way down, coming onto our knees. As promised, we'll do a camel pose, which is I what I think one of the most challenging back bends, at least it is for me. Still a work in progress, but it's really good for us, a really good expanding pose. So knees underneath the hips, tops of the feet can be flat on the mat. Some people curl their toes under. I typically don't take that option, it just doesn't feel right to me. So see what's right for you. If you want to grab a couple of books or blocks, they might be helpful on the outsides of your feet. If not, you can just adjust as needed, okay? Because we're going to start with a little bit of an easier variation. We're going to bring our hands behind our back, like you're sticking them in your back pockets of your blue jeans. And then we're, we're going to bring those elbows in towards each other, and that little motion already is going to open up the heart. Inhale, lengthen. So think about reaching the crown of the head towards the sky. Exhale, use the hands to press the hips forward as you gaze up and back, opening up through the heart. Now, important thing to note here is we're trying to keep our hip bones in line with the knees. So we have a tendency to want to sink back, but that puts extra strain on the knees, and so we're trying to avoid that motion. A few breaths, you might find it's a little bit harder to breathe in a deep back bend like this. Very slowly, one vertebrae at a time, come all the way up. Great, you can stay with that option. We'll do that a couple more times, or we can do it without arms. So if you wanna try it deeper, inhale, lift the arms up. We'll start with the left exhale. Imagine you're kind of taking a back stroke in the pool. Reach that left hand towards that left ankle. This is where you might want a book or a block. If you can reach that ankle, no problem, then just go for it. Otherwise, hand on the block, reach those hips forward, open up through the heart. Good, stay here, and you can do one arm at a time. Or if you feel open enough, bring both hands behind you, maybe reaching for both blocks or for both ankles, and then press the hips forward, open up through the heart. Okay, so I'll just let you choose. But as you come in and out of the posture, really think about being gentle on your spine. So lifting back up one vertebrae at a time. Let's take one more moment here. And then as you're ready, Come to sink, sit back on your heels, bring the knees together. We're just gonna do a little bit of a counter pose. Should feel good on the back. Inhale, arms lift. Elbows, the side of the arms squeeze wet, side of the ears, keep the hands together. Dive down, trying to bring the forehead to the floor before the hands. So we're really gonna have to lengthen the spine in order to do that. Lengthen, 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 and then forehead touches. Once it's there, you can release the hands down, walk them forward. And then here's the challenge. Try to come out of this pose same way we came in. So lift the hands up and then come up one vertebrae at a time. Hands out to the side and we're just gonna roll over. We're gonna extend the legs out long. We're gonna come out down on the mat very slowly. Ending with a spinal twist. We'll bring our knees together. Arms out to either side, let the knees fall over towards the left. And you'll look over that right shoulder.
Inhale, knees back through center. Let them fall over to the opposite side and lift over the other shoulder. Inhale, come back through center. This is your opportunity to take any other poses, postures, stretches, or preparations you need before final Shavasana. If you want happy baby, this is, could be a really good time to do that as our spine is all stretched out. Or if you want a shoulder stand, another type of back bend, whatever you'd like. If you want to put on a pair of socks, that's usually how I spend the free time when teachers tell me is I put on a sweater or socks or something because I get full after I practice. Feel free to do that. Otherwise, whenever you're ready, you can find that place to final rest. Traditionally, that's taken with our legs out long and our arms out long with our palms facing up. And the eyes can come to a gentle close. Before we enter Shavasana, maybe think about exiting this practice fully the movement part of the practice fully. Letting go of any judgments you had of yourself, whether good or bad. Letting go of the tension, the engagement you felt in your body. Letting go of any emotions or memories that were brought up. Exiting fully. Once you do that, maybe you notice that your Shavasana is a little bit more free and light. Letting the breath come in easy. And if the mind wanders, just bring it back. It's not a big deal. Breathing here for a few moments of silence before we end our class together. As you're ready, bring your attention back into your surroundings. Knowing that if you have the time today, you'd rather just stay in Shavasana, you can stay here. Otherwise, awakening yourself, bring some movement. Rolling around the ankles and wrists. Maybe with a deep breath, you can lift the arms all the way up overhead, lengthen. And then rolling over to one side, pausing there. Bring your knees in towards your chest, giving yourself a little hug. Taking any reflections you had with you. And then coming back to find that comfortable seat. Once again, eyes still closed. Taking a deep breath, inhale, let's lift the arms up overhead. Palms touch, exhale, lower the hands, letting them pause over the forehead. 
that symbol and reminder for us to have kind thoughts, hands over the mouth as that reminder to use gentle words, and then hands at heart center as a reminder to always go with your intentions. The light within me sees the light within each of you. Namaste.